A lot of people think that they don't have enough time, but what they're usually lacking is actually energy. That in terms of sheer hours in the day, when they aren't preoccupied with something they have to be doing, they just feel so spent from the day job, from classes, from their other obligations, to use that hours to do many things. Like they wind up just sort of, you know, watching shows or decompressing or recovering. And this is so often a limiter for game developers, where a lot of people I hear, they're like, okay, well, say a lot of people get into game programming, right? They, a lot of them have day jobs in software engineering, something not games. And they'll say, Chris, I spend literally eight hours a day at a desk coding. How in the heck am I supposed to come home, sit at a desk and do more coding, even if I want to? And what they're overlooking is a thing that a lot of people overlook. And once you get this key idea, I think it opens up a lot of possibilities in your life. And here's the deal. If you're doing someone else's work for someone else, someone else's way, it's draining. It's depleting your batteries. When you're doing your work, your way for your project, it's actually refilling your battery. And I'm saying battery, but this is actually, this is kind of actually a, a separate dimension than our physical stamina. So if we think, for example, of somebody who, you know, I'm sure we all know these people, even if we're not them sometimes, somebody who stays up late drawing, somebody who stays up late studying a field of interest, somebody who stays up late programming, maybe not even games, but they just, they are obsessed with solving the puzzle. And it can still wreck them the next day. They're still exhausted because they stayed up too late, right? That's because we're seeing the intersection of their stamina is drained, their physical ability. They haven't slept enough. They are literally just not eating enough, etc. We can start to edge into that, but the reason why they can cram in all that time is because it's their thing, their way, and they're excited about it because they get to try things their way. There's this term from psychology called ego depletion, and that's kind of key to this. And I think like a lot of pop psychology that's found a way into the mainstream, it's been oversimplified both directions. I mean, first there was all kinds of articles saying, oh, it's so real, everyone should pay attention. And then there's some articles of backlash of maybe it's totally false and here's some counter science and science is much more nuanced than that. So it's a useful idea though. And the idea of ego depletion is that will control or impulse control and self-control drains our willpower in a way that when we're at the supermarket, for example, we're in the, we're in the checkout line, we see a candy bar. One reason why we might be tempted to grab it is because we're so exhausted at making so many decisions throughout the grocery store of stuff we have to get, money we can't spend, things that we're not really doing what we wanted to do, maybe. And the same thing actually applies when, like I say, if you're at the day job, you're working on someone else's project, someone else's way, there's this constant grind and pushback of the way you'd like to try it, the idea you think it ought to be done with, the, the way you think it should be tried, that you'd like to test and find out the answer to, to satisfy your own curiosity, we often don't get to. And that's perfectly reasonable. It's someone else is being, someone else is paying for you to try their method, their way, their project, take their risk as a business. But this is where, again, it's, it's also something that when you spend that little bit extra time, whether it's an hour a week at first, whether it's two hours a week on a guarded time on every Saturday afternoon, whatever you find works for you. It's something that if you start to do those, you start to find you have more energy to do the things you care to do. Cause it gets to be really rewarding, really exciting. When you start getting that traction of, looking at this thing that you made, that you created, your way. And when you start to feel that learning of, there's ways you thought things should be done, you tried them. Some you found worked, some you found didn't work, but the ones you found didn't work, you feel yourself growing, you see that improvement in yourself from testing your assumptions that used to just float around your head of what you thought would be good. And all that kind of satisfaction helps drive us in a way that cannot be satisfied purely by doing someone else's work, someone else's way. So. Sometimes we have these things in our lives where we feel the need to optimize against, well, okay, but what's my time being held accountable for? How am I being rewarded for it? And like, okay, well, on the one end, I'm making money when I do programming for this other stuff. Why would I do programming that's, that's not being paid yet, et cetera? Why am I doing that work for free in a sense? And again, the point is you're actually, you're, you're still getting something out of it. And in fact, it's almost a mislabeled thing to call it work. When some people look at that and they say, you know, oh, you work too much, workaholic, etc. And it's, to be fair, some people do overdo it and we don't want to, you know, trivialize that. But for a lot of the situation, it's because the kind of things that people get carried away on, it's because to them it's not work, it's a source of satisfaction. It's a source of growth, it's a source of expression, whether they're, like I say, staying up programming or painting or whatever else their passion might be, it's they're getting carried away on the fact they get to do their thing, their way, and that fills us up in a way that gives us more energy throughout the week. It helps counteract the time we've been draining. And where this thing can be most difficult, it's just like this previous video talking about transitions, is making that shift for if all you're ever doing, and I know there's a lot of people watching this video where this might be the case, if all you're ever doing is work for somebody else and you feel so drained from that, you're not sure how to fit in your thing, your way, 
you got to start putting that foot in the door because the hardest thing is making that gap where you have no energy yet coming from the satisfaction of doing your thing your way. But as soon as you start to do, once you get that crack in there, you start making that bigger and bigger, you start to realize how much it's a source for you. It's not just another drain. See the distinction? Your thing your way as opposed to their thing their way. So that's the whole message for today. Find an outlet in your life for whatever it might be that you find rewarding. In fact, I'd love to see in the comments, trying to get better about doing this, what do you find refills your batteries? Is it writing creative stories? Is it uh, programming? Even if it's not games, you just like solving those hard puzzles. For some people, it's working with hardware. For some people, it's customizing their PC. Whatever it is you like to do your way that you find fill, refills your energy, share that below. It might be applicable to some other viewers of the video in terms of what kind of work fills them up because another sort of detail to this is that let's say you have kind of a maybe an in in terms of out of all the game development skills you could have you have one main area and for a lot of people watching this video i know a lot of you are probably primarily programmers but for some people it's going to be their art their music production their writing whatever remembering that that can be a source of energy to do the thing that you like to do your way that especially if you feel like you have some like you're a little bit good at it already that can help fill you back up to then push those boundaries that even if you're not an art person, trying to do some art, even if you're not a programmer doing some programming, by going back to the thing you like to do to fill you back up, to spend it on doing the part that yeah, maybe isn't quite the way you want to do it because you kind of still feel uncomfortable there. It's going to come from doing the thing you like to charge you up and then reinvest that energy across the board to push back those skills, grow in those areas, round out your ability to realize your ideas your way, and it always becomes a rapid accelerator to, to recharging yourself even better making even better projects. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, once again, let me know in the comments what recharges your battery, what skill when you use it do you find actually kind of fills you back up, even if in some other context, for somebody else, it might be perceived as work of some kind. Thanks for tuning in. I look forward to playing your games in the future. Bye for now.